Uh, let me tell my Xbox fan. Uh, Liverpool versus everybody. We are back um, to talk about this mad game that took place last night at Anfield. Liverpool, obviously, versus both Salzburg. And, um, yeah, I don't even know where to start with this one. But I guess we'll start with uh, the lineup. But, I mean, I think that's pretty much what people would expect. There were some people who were thinking that um, across social media and platforms, thinking that maybe Milner would come in from the start. Gomez might play full back. Uh, Nabby might even see a start. Um, but were you pretty – Pretty good with the the lineup. You pretty much thought that was the best playing our best eleven. Um, yeah, probably. I mean, Gomez obviously Matip's injured, wasn't he? So yeah, 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 yeah. So Gomez, um, you know, filled in that position. That midfield, I was, I wouldn't say I was surprised, but I thought maybe we would have seen it, um, a change in midfield. Um, but we didn't. So I thought, okay, well, let's you know, let's just go into the game. Um, as I said, when I see the lineup, I look at it, I don't really. Maybe sometimes I think he should have played it a little bit, but. I never really complain about the lineup. I just look at it and say, you know, let's just go win this match. Right, right. So yeah, and I, and I think at the end of the day, I mean, the, the the midfield pretty much worked out, especially in that first 25, 30 minutes, thirty five minutes to a push. And let's just talk about that first half. Um, that's probably something for me from from what I can remember. That's probably some of the best football we've played um, in a while, especially in the Champions League. I know Champions League just started, but it kind of reminds you reminded you of some of those games um, last season. Uh, that we look getting goals, things of that nature, and maybe even the year before, um, and, and Marabor and things like that. So it looked like we we're really going to turn this team over, and I'm starting to think, man, there was so much talk about this this team as far as in their league, you know, putting up so many goals and things of that nature. Um, we'll get to the second half, and we kind of saw that from them. But that first half, just talk to me about how you felt. Did you were you like me? Did you think, man, this could be four or five, six at the end of the day, or did you feel like? Maybe we were a little bit too laxed, and the goal that uh, the first goal, at least that um, Salzburg got, was coming. Um, I mean, they had a few chances early on, didn't they? They had a few moments, let's just say, not really chances, but a few moments where they could have, um, you know, created some good good opportunities to score. Um, and I, I, even before the game, I said this is this is a sort of team that's going to be like Norwich. Um, they're going to play their own game. Because I did call it, I knew Salzburg a good team, but they're going to be Norwich, but with a bit more quality. Um, and that's the game we saw. We scored four goals, but they scored three. And easily on that day, on that Friday night football, Norwich could have scored three goals easily as well that day. Um, so it was a pretty similar game. We just rolled them over, and then we just got a bit complacent. Um, the football we were playing was absolutely fabulous. I mean, the second goal was just brilliant. The first goal was brilliant. The, the football we were playing was brilliant. So it was just out of this world. I was thinking, you know what, let's just roll these over, let's get 4-5 and let's just start resting players for the weekend on Saturday uh, for, mm-hmm. for, for Leicester. And then they got that goal at 3-1, so I was thinking, all right, you know, they got the goal, Hopefully, he just, just kicks us into it. And then we come out in the second half, very sloppy, very slow. Uh, we let we didn't really control the game at all. They got the second goal, and what annoyed me, when they got the second goal, that should have woke us up. It shouldn't have taken us to go to 3-3 to wake us up. We should have been awake anyway, but... At the very minimum, we should have, when it went 3 2, we should have said, all right, cool, let's just keep the ball now and let's just, you know, control this game and hope to get another. What we did, we let them, we let Salzburg again do their thing, play football because they had a few nippy players in there, a few good players. Um, and they got the third, and that, that, that's, that, that kicked us into gear. Um, and then we started controlling the game, got the goal, and, and we, we just went back to the Liverpool, as we know, controlling the game for the last 20 minutes. And that's what we should have done for the whole game since we went 3 0 up. Um, so, I think this could be a good wake-up call for the team because Leicester is going to be a big challenge on Saturday. Um, it's going to be a sort of a similar challenge on Saturday where they're going to, going to come and play their own game and also try to defend and hit us on a break. And they've got, let's just say, you know, probably even better players than Salzburg, uh, more quality players than Salzburg. Madison, Vardy, um, you look at them, you feel Tillemans. Indeed, you've got a strong midfield, you know, better than I've said it on um Tuesday, I think I said it on. They've got a midfield better than teams uh, in the top six. So I, I'm just happy they got the win. Um, but, you know, that there, there are, I wouldn't say there's a few concerns because I just think that there's, possibly there's a few, but I think that I, I, I saw someone say that, you know, it wasn't us being complacent. It was a tactical change Salzburg made. It wasn't a tactical change Salzburg made. It was us taking the piss at 3 0, thinking we've already won the game. And you can see as soon as we went 3 3, we started being, we started, we started taking the game seriously again. Um, but uh, you know, let's just let, let's just move on to Saturday. But it was um, 
I'm I, in a way I'm sort of I'm sort of happy that this sort of happened because I don't want us being complacent on Saturday where it's more important because you know you, you can drop points in terms of being sort of make up and in the Premier League you can't really do that especially see around so I'm happy this is sort of, this has hopefully kicked us into gear for Saturday. Yeah, this team um, RB really reminded me of um, some earlier maybe Liverpool sides with Klopp. Um, very very good attacking, um, prone to making some mistakes at the back. This guy Milamino, Chin. I mean Chin really really did something incredible against Van Dyke and I say that to say look oh that can happen to any defender but yeah. I've never seen that happen with, with I don't know with yeah, I, don't know I, mean, I mean he completely shook the hell out of that dude yeah I don't know why Van Dyke was sliding in the first place um yeah Van Dyke was, wasn't great let's be honest he wasn't great on the yeah he wasn't great I, I tweeted I, I, I put it on Twitter I said that we do we, we love Van Dyke he's the best center back in the world we know that um but just because you I know I said Gomez wasn't great you, you know, I thought he's... I yeah, thought, we'll talk about Gomez in a second. Sure. Yeah, I thought he's... Um, yeah, we'll talk about Gomez in a second, but... Yeah, I mean, Van Dyke wasn't great. I don't think he should have slid in there. I thought he just should have just stayed on his feet. Um, and then 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 also, the goalkeeper would have had a better chance of saving it because it was on his left foot and he had a tight angle. It what, allowed, what Van Dyke allowed him to do was cut inside, get a better angle and take it on a stronger foot. Yeah, I mean, listen... I... <laughs> You know, I'm glad we got out of that game, but let's be real. There was there was a moment where the keeper, I don't know why he's waiting that long to clear it, but it, okay. it could have been ricochet in the goal. There was a couple other chances they had in and around the goals that they got. So I have to say we got lucky or whatever because we had chances at will that we didn't take. And I think that's, again, I keep talking about it. At halftime, I said, um, I, I feel really comfortable about winning this game, and I feel like we will win it, but we're playing a dangerous game with letting RB Leipzig back into the game because RB, RB Leipzig – are good to talk about the tactical switch. I don't know. I, I agree with you. I know Klopp mentioned that too as well. I don't know if that's just. I don't know what. No, I don't even know what that means to be honest. I mean, we've been we've been successful for quite a while with Klopp, and if teams make tactical switches, okay, well, we got to deal with that. So I don't want to hear that. That's what why they scored the goals. I just think honestly. I just think honestly. I, I don't know if 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 we really thought much about this team, and I and I think RB Leipzig were able to take advantage of that. But yeah, I think Gomez. Let's talk about Gomez. Listen. It's it's incredible to see people in comment sections on different YouTube channels um, saying things like Gomez isn't fast, he's not good enough. Um, those people must have just started watching Liverpool. Listen, it, it does show this, though. I think Matip and Van Dijk are just an incredible combo, and that, that is the best combo we have. Um, it may seem har harsh on Gomez because we know what he did with, with, with Van Dijk last season, but he hasn't played as much, obviously. There might be a little bit of rust there. Um, he is fast. There's no question about that. He's definitely quick. There were some moments there where he was just grabbing jerseys, though. And I think we're probably quite fortunate that um, the ref wasn't catching some of those. I know the, the uh, American uh, manager for the, the, the other side was a bit upset and, and gyrating on the sideline about those things. That was more so towards the end of the game. And I think he was just hoping that he can get something because I think he felt his team played so well to come back. He ran down the touchline, down the touchline to celebrate a goal as if they won the whole cup. Um, got a yellow card for So, you know, good on him. But, you know... Um, I love Gomez, and I love that he's a player that, that we could um, put in when we need him. But I'm sorry, it just showed that we missed Matip, in my opinion. What do you think about that? Yeah, it does. I mean, I was I was a bit shocked with Gomez's performance last night. Um, I mean, I said even if Matip was fit, I would have played Gomez because I thought, you know, Champions League game, um, you know, let's just give Matip, let's give Gomez a chance this game. It's at Anfield. We should be fine. Uh, give Gomez a chance to get some minutes back in. And I was a bit disappointed. I think I thought... Um, I thought Gomez was really good in in the one v one duels, um, where he was you know roughing up players, you know getting past them. Strength, I I do agree. He was, he was um, getting caught on the wrong side a couple of times, but I thought his his um, uh, you know he's been aggressive. Obviously his pace, his strength. He was using all of that, and in one v one duels, he was brilliant. His positioning, on the other hand, was really really poor. Um, you know, I, for the for the for the first goal, I think we conceded. Um, Henderson gives the ball away. Van Dijk, obviously, I don't know where go. Where is Gomez in that position? Van Dijk comes in, he, he obviously commits, and Gomez should be there to cover him. He wasn't there at all. Um, and the third goal again, he just it's just schoolboy defending. He's looking at Haaland every single time. That big, that big lad. He's looking at him every single time. So weird. That was so frustrating seeing those replays back. Did like, you bro, see? Him? You he, he kept turning his head, looking at him, looking at him. Just watching him. 
Yeah, just watching him and lets him go, you know, um, lets him just have a free tap in. I don't know why. Was that, was that, was that the Holland one where uh, Van Dyke tries to tries to block the cross and, and yeah. just pretty, pretty much yeah. watches the goal go in? Yeah, exactly. And he, and, he, and the thing was that what, what irritated me was it's not that he had no clue where he was. Is that he kept turning his head three or four times, looking at where he was, and then the final second he loses him. Um, I thought Fabinho was poor in that in that little sequence of play. Um, gets turned really easily. I think Van Dyke should be more um, aggressive. I think he should put in. You know, close down the space a bit more. And yeah. Gomez, just, I don't know what Gomez is doing there. It was just a collection of different errors. And I was calling for Henderson to be subbed off way before he got subbed off. Why did it take Barcelona awesome to go to 3 3 for him to get subbed off? He was having a shocking game. That's, that, that's the thing, man. I mean, we can obviously, not to cut you off, we can obviously praise Klopp when he makes good changes, but we got to talk about the changes that he, he doesn't make or that he waits too long to make or that aren't good. Like, for, for example, the Milner thing, did you think that was a good change? Are you okay with that? Well, at the time, I was thinking, you know, we need a bit of a progressive midfielder here. But I, you know what? I didn't think he actually did that bad when he came on. No, uh, no, no, no. And I was gonna say he didn't do that bad. But still, to me, in in, in that game, it just did. I mean, that was that game was getting really, really out of control, in my opinion. And I felt like, yeah, you would think the obvious choice is okay, out of control, Milner, because Milner can come in and control it. But I'm like, yeah. ah, I just, I don't know, man. I, I like the Nabby thing. It was a little bit too late. I don't think at that point we really necessarily yeah. needed him. So I thought, I thought we tried to. He, he was probably thinking. I mean, this is just me. You know, yeah. You know what? Maybe Klopp thought playing devil, devil's advocate, but I think what he was probably thinking was um, Henderson and Ronaldo are both having poor games. Um, both look very leggy. Don't we're, we're giving the ball away. Um, and I, what he's probably thinking is let's get Origi in a four-two-three-one, uh, and let's get maybe Milner to you know in a bit more of a defensive shape because we maybe can't have Keita and Chamberlain in you know in a two in Fabinho. I mean that's just what I'm thinking. Maybe I'm not too sure, but. I, I didn't think I thought I thought Milner did actually okay when he came. When I was, yeah, no, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I was because like, I thought when he when, when we went four three up, we actually started controlling the game. He kept he kept the possession. He kept everything ticking. So, so I'll, I'll, in the end, it was it was a good substitution. But I mean, even when K Kater came on for two minutes, you could just see what he he, he brings in anyway. Um, that acceleration, that 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 speed, this dribbling. I just, I just want him to. I just want him to get this run of games so badly because I just know what how good he can be, and he's gonna be so so important for us when he, when he um when he gets these minutes and gets game time in this run of games, and he cannot go to the international break now. I, I don't know. I don't know what what the situation is, but he cannot go to, to the international break again. Um, because he gets fit and then he goes to the international break again. I mean, listen, it's time for him now just to say, I need a couple of weeks off. I'm not coming. Um. So he, he can't go to the international break because all his injuries have come have basically come from the, the international break. I remember when he got injured last year at the start of the season. It was from the international break. He got an injured international break in the uh, Africa of Nations. Um, so you know he needs to just you know let, let you know work with club and the training ground for two weeks while the other lads are not on the on the break and uh, come back stronger. And, you, and you'll be much better. Uh, you'll be much more fit. Um, and you'll get much more game time as well coming back uh, because you'll be, you know, the fittest and, and fresh in the field out of the bunch. So you'll get a lot more game time. So he, he as I said, K is such a fabulous player for us. And as I said, you can see in two minutes how good he can be um, and what he can bring to us, something different. So let's just, um, but at the minute, we're just, uh, again, on Saturday, I just don't know what he's going to do. He cannot play for Benio Henderson or Ronaldo. But again, I was expecting him to make changes for this game and play Keita or play someone else, and then I thought we'd go back to Ronaldo, Fabinho, Henderson. But after that performance, for me, Henderson or just someone has to be dropped in that midfield. For me, yeah, Henderson yeah. Has to be dropped. It has to be Henderson yeah. because you have to remember Henderson's gone off sixty minutes twice now, isn't he? So he didn't have a good game at Sheffield. Didn't have a good game at Salzburg. Can't play against Leicester. I would play um, Keita if he's fit, or maybe Chamberlain, but not um, not not. Um, I don't think Ronaldo had the greatest game again, but. I wouldn't play Henderson. Uh, I'd play Wijnaldum, Fabinho and Chamberlain, Wijnaldum, Fabinho or um, get Navigator. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get into the, um, the lineup for Leicester here shortly. Just to round off the Salzburg game, there was way too many giveaways in that game, um, throughout the game, really. But, but yeah. you, in the first half, you can kind of allow the few moments we had of that because we would, every time we got the ball, it looked like Liverpool were going to score. Literally, every mm -hmm. time we got the ball, I'm thinking, okay, counter-attack, boom, we're going to score. And we had those chances to do it. Salah had a beautiful opportunity in the first. I don't yeah. know what, why the hell he didn't finish that. Could have had a hat trick. But okay. Which I don't want to be harsh. I don't want to be, I don't want to go ahead. What are you talking about with Salah? That, that chance in the first half, it was a pass from, I think, Fabinho over the top and Salah misses the pretty much one-on-one -on -one, uh, oh, shot. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, 
I don't want to be harsh on Salah because obviously he gets two goals, could have had more. Um, he still irritated me a bit as far as um, uh, his awareness when he has the ball to look for a pass. Yeah. But again, I, I think Salah and Mane were, were, were pretty much money in that he's first half. Especially for Disney, so no. Say again? He gives the ball away. Uh, That's way point. too much for me, man. Wait, uh, but, but again, I keep saying it's because he's so worried about scoring goals, which is cool. So it's like if things aren't working out for him, last second he might give the ball away. Or try to pass the ball to someone, but it ends up just giving it away. And it's like a lazy pass or whatever. But hey, look, at the end of the day, he scores a brace. Yeah, two goals. You know what I mean? I think, he, I think him and Salah were pretty good. Um, mm. But, yeah, just wrapping that up, I just think it, obviously it's good to get the win. But like you said, I like what you said about maybe that's a wake-up call. Maybe we needed that to get ready for, um, for Leicester. And to be honest, I still think we'll top this group. But I'm, so- I'm shocked at the, the, the Gink and Napoli result. That's very shocking to me. I didn't see yeah. the game, obviously. But I feel like this RB team, this Salzburg team, could really give Napoli a good run, um, and both and both legs. I think that, I think they can really really give them a good run, which may be good. Maybe we we, we, we can hope for Napoli to drop a point or two um, between those legs or whatever. Um, but now I'm curious about Gink. I mean, how how on earth are they drawing with Napoli? Uh, so yeah, I don't know. That that was that game. Um, in Gink or was it in Napoli? Uh, yeah, it was in Gink. But I mean, Gink got absolutely put, smashed by Salzburg. So I was thinking Napoli are gonna, you know, roll them over here. Right. They must. They must have. I wonder if they had like a real defensive setup or something. I don't know. Well, well know. it's just some of the highlights. I mean, uh, Napoli had a couple of chances, but they, they didn't really create much. Um, okay. I mean, Salzburg. You know, they can. They can. You know, cause some threat to um, what's his name? Uh, uh, um, Napoli. Napoli. But yeah. I think what Salzburg need to do now is they need to beat Gink away uh, again and I think they need to take four points from um, Napoli which is you know home and away which is going to be a tough ask but you know something that they can do I mean they showed that you know the, the fight they showed was brilliant they never give up you know and it was a team that was playing without pressure basically at three nil down we've got nothing to lose just go give it a game that's what that's what that's what it was so yeah uh, I mean it, again it looked like us you know with that comeback it was it, it reminded me of like I don't know Barcelona Dortmund whatever it, mm. it, it was just such quick succession which was irritating and again, the, the Mil- Milamino, whatever his name is, kid, the, the Holland guy, the Chin dude, they had some good players, man. A lot of good players in their team. So um, mm. the fact that they were able to bring on Holland and, and when they were getting really into the game must have been a, um, you know, a good thing for them to be able to bring their star player on at that, at that point. Probably us a little bit tired. The, the kid is a unit. I mean, I didn't think he was that big. Yeah, I mean, what I said was when I was watching the game, I said he's a striker version of the Ligt. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's exactly yeah. And but he get, for, for a big dude, he can get around the pitch pretty. He's not yeah, like a big blue type of guy. Yeah, I, I was surprised at that. So they could be a problem, man. They could be a problem, and, and you can see what we had heard. They're scoring so many goals. It wasn't just something they were doing in their league. They they obviously can put up goals. They put up against us and Gink. So I got to believe that they'll score against Napoli and maybe give them a hard time. But yeah, I just feel like us getting past them, hopefully twice, uh, beating them away from home, and then getting Gink twice. Uh, we should be fine. Hopefully get Napoli again when they come back to our place. But, um, yeah, it's good to get the win, um, the first win of the Champions League. Hopefully the next game isn't that nervous towards the end. But let's be honest, man. I mean, for me at least, I never – I thought we'd win that game even when it got to 3-3. I just felt like yeah, I Liverpool are making this really interesting for neutrals, and this is what they do, unfortunately. But yeah. I felt like we, we'd grab that win either way. Yeah, and also I think uh, Salzburg – sorry to cut you off there, but Salzburg, I think – I thought um, they, they did really well and they caused a few problems, but I think it was mostly um, us, you know. I think that's true. I agree. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think it was just us making it hard for ourselves. I don't think, I mean, you can see that when we're, when we're on fire, we just smashed them 3-0. We were smashing 3-0 in the first half. So, you know, and I think we could have continued that easily, but we didn't need to continue that. All we need to do is just control the game. We didn't need to go full pelt in the second half. We just need to control the ball, control the game, and that's it. But we just, all we did was we became unsettled and after the first goal and second goal, um, you know, we failed to get control of the match and we made a couple of substitutions and, you know, they ended up working. Um, so, but as I said, and the thing with me is, as I said, I'm happy with uh, Leicester being our, home, uh, our next game because it's oh, yeah. I don't want, I didn't want it to be um, a new cast at home that just parked the bus. I want to see the reaction from Liverpool now because Leicester, uh, they, they aren't, they aren't going to sit back and just defend. They're going to come and they're going to try and play football. Um, I think that's what we know of Brendan Rodgers' teams. You know, you never really know from just parking the bus, is he? Uh, but they will, you know, they will try to defend, obviously, um, and they will um, try to hit us in a break. And they got Vardy up front, you know. That's they got, they got threats in, in behind that can cause us problems. So I would, I'm happy it's Leicester because they're gonna they're gonna show us something different. They're gonna show us the same thing that Salzburg showed us. Um, 
Uh, so let's just see if we if we woken up or not. It's a big test on Saturday, but I think that what Klopp said, I think he said that um, he touched on a post match press conference. So, you know, Brendan Rodgers will be looking at that and you'll think you'll be thinking he's already got his game plan and with Vardy. So I think Klopp's already aware of that and he's obviously going to have a word with the, with the, with the, with the team. Uh, not that he needs to have too much. I think the players should know that themselves that they, they need to fix up. Um, so, you know, Saturday's an interesting game. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a, a very interesting test for, for Liverpool and for Leicester. Yeah, I love that reaction from Klopp. I think after the second or third goal. Okay, <laughs> he was just like, okay, all right. Yeah. Um, Let's, let's, I think we're both itching to talk about the Leicester game, so let's move on to that. Let's be done with RB Leipzig, obviously. Yeah. RB, RB Salzburg, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we're, we're both happy we got the win. Um, there's some things there, but let's move on to Leicester. Uh, big game, obviously. And, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying about Leicester being open, um, but I have this sneaky feeling that because it's at Anfield um, and Brendan Rodgers would be pretty much familiar with that, although I don't think the support was anywhere near what it is now when Brendan Rodgers is there, but he'll know um what that's like and I, I have a feeling that not that he'll play defensively but I think he will tend to go more with the counter although you could say and this was the thing in the Salzburg game Salzburg again I said it they remind me of a, a Liverpool side or a Dortmund side and I feel like because the game was so open with two open teams usually people say oh Liverpool have a field day and we had that in the first half and we had a chance to get that in the second half but it works both ways and Salzburg must have been licking their chops thinking we've got Liverpool wide open stretched let's 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 have a go at this we, we, we have nothing to lose, like you said. We're down 3-1. Um, if we lose this, we're supposed to lose anyway. If we can make a fight for this and maybe get a result, how amazing would that be? So I'm wondering if Leicester, sure, you would think Brendan Rodgers would say, oh, we'll, we'll do the same thing that, that um, Salzburg did and, you know, roll the dice a bit. I'm not sure. I think at, if they were playing at, at um, King Power, they might do that. But um, maybe I have it reversed. Maybe at King Power, they'd be a bit more um, careful as opposed to, 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 to um, Anfield. But either way, I just think, Obviously, this Leicester team is, is getting some steam. They're looking really good. Um, they're top three right now. And based on form, they're the third best team in the league. And they'll be confident in that. And they've gotten good results against us, whether it be um, Club Puel or whoever their manager was. They've, had, they've gotten decent results against us and us against them. But I am looking to see um, a, a, a bounce back. And I'm wondering about Matip. I don't know what his fitness levels is. I don't know if you've heard anything. But I, I, you got to believe that Matip needs to be back in that, in that defense. Um, no, I agree with you. I mean, I, I don't think Leicester are going to come out and, you know, play it open like, like Norwich. I do think they're going to defend. Um, they're not going to come there, open up. But what I meant is, um, uh, maybe I was just, my words didn't get out properly. But what I meant is that they're, they're not going to just come and sit behind the ball and not really come out all uh, yeah, and, and for a set piece. Uh, they are going to come out, uh, again, not, not come out, I mean, you know, come out all guns blazing, but they are going to have opportunities where they're going to look, they're going to have the intent to attack. You know, oh, it's, not, sure. it's not going to be like a Newcastle game where they're going to be, you know, sitting back hoping for a lucky goal or a set piece. They are going to, um, you know, try to hit us on a break. And with the pace of Vardy and the movement of him, if it is Gomez playing, I mean, we'll see what Klopp says tomorrow, but if it is Gomez playing, he needs to really fix up um, because, you know, Vardy's very, very clinical as well. Uh, running in behind, so he's going to be a problem if we if we sort of play anyway anywhere near that second half, which I don't think we will anyway. But um, you know, Gomez does need to you know prove a point uh, that he can deal with him. So yeah, I mean, Leicester is going to be you know it's, I think Rogers is I think I think Rogers is a good manager. I think he'd do a better job than some of the top six managers are doing at this minute. Um, you know, with Emery, I think as I said, Rogers always had this clear philosophy. Um, of the way he wants to play, but I, I can see also see it being a similar game to. I remember when they played City at the Etihad, and they they literally parked the bus. Um, they had a few opportunities, too, but they, you know they parked the bus. Um, but I think they'll be a bit more open than that because they might be, they might look at or maybe not be more open, but they might counter more than they did against City away when Company scored that goal because I think they will be look at maybe the Salzburg game, and think that we can, we have opportunities to get in behind. Um, and I think with the players, you know, obviously Rogers signed a few players now um, and added that team. So it's gonna it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. A tough game. I don't think it's gonna be a battering at all. Um, but what I'd like to see us is start the same way we started against Salzburg and finish the way that we started. Um, you know, we need to we need to go all guns blazing with this. It's, it's it's a final game before the national break, and it's and, you know, at Anfield we have to win this. Uh, and what it put us in a brilliant position. Twenty four out twenty four. Uh, international break, then we obviously got the United game after that. So, yeah, it's going to be a good game. And Leicester do have a few 
um, as a good player in the field, but the defense is pretty good as well. Ricardo Pereira. Um, yeah, he yeah, scored last week. He scored the previous week before against Spurs as well. Um, you know, Chilwell, very good left back. You know, John Johnny Evans and Soyonku, that Soyonku guy is a very good player. Oh, man, yeah, that guy, he can play, man, defensively. I've wow. watched him and I've, I'm thinking, they're not missing much with Maguire here. I mean, what a player he is. Um, they've got 80 million from Maguire and, if, and they've got them signed him. I mean, they signed him last time, but he's, he's, he's playing regularly now, so he's, he's done yeah, a very I wonder, I wonder if Maguire, I mean, I know his pockets are a little fatter now, but I wonder if he's thinking, damn, Leicester look a bit better than United right now. Yeah, I mean... I mean, a bit, I think you're doing a favour by saying a bit there for United because I think Leicester, have, they're playing attacking football, they're creating chances, something that United can't do. They can't create chances, they can't, you know, they can't open up teams. Um, so, you know, forget United. I mean, it's just, as I said, it's an important game for us and it's a chance for us to go 17 wins in the Premier League, isn't it? So, uh, closing that record. But I think an early goal really help uh, us. <clears throat> an early goal really help us here. Uh, and I just want to see us going... You know, all out for it. Attack Leicester. For, I think we're going to get quite a lot of space on the flanks as well with Alexander Arnold Robertson. Um, you know, whip those balls in and uh, yeah, and make a couple of changes for me definitely uh, in midfield. Probably just thought, I mean, if Matt is fit, obviously he can come back in, but we have to make a change in midfield. We cannot play with, us, with that same midfield after after you know what two poor performances from them. If I wanted to do back to back. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think I think it'll be fine. I think again. Teams like this at a level that Liverpool are on, sometimes you need these kind of wake-up calls. It's frustrating sometimes. Um, when you win, it's a little less frustrating. But mm. like Klopp said, you know, if you can learn a lesson and actually get a win, then cool. If you got to learn a lesson and then talk about it later, then that's irritating. But um, I'm sure Klopp is, would, would have been just living with the second-half performance. And, and uh, like you said, the players don't really need a, a pep talk from Klopp anymore these days. I'm sure, I'm sure it helps. But they know when they're, they, they haven't played well. And they know when performance is, is disappointing, whether we win or not. So I think, um, you know, the Sheffield United was we out of that, and it feels good. Same thing with this. A um, few more goals, obviously. But we got out of the game, and, and that's all that really, really matters. And I think uh, with Leicester coming, coming to town, I'm glad we got back-to-back home games um, with Europe and then obviously domestically. But uh, with Leicester coming to town, this team will be up for it. And, and, and look, to come back on Gomez, I don't want to be too harsh on him. He hasn't been playing a lot. Um, he looked like he was not, not, only, not only rusty physically, but just – and mentally, you know, some of the things he was doing, I was just thinking, bro, you got to get back in the swing of things because they, you, you see the gap now. Um, and there's obvious reasons for that, but you see the gap now, in my opinion, whether it be small or large, between him and Massive at this point. There's no question who, who the second best is. Yeah, second. exactly. So um, if we don't have Matt back, I'm not panic mode at all uh, because I think Gomez, again, is a good defender. And I think he, we've, we've seen that he didn't all of a sudden become a bad defender. Yeah. the last few months. So I think Gomez will be fine. Just need to get him back up to speed as fast as, fast as possible. Um, but give me, tell me, just tell me the rest of your, your lineup um, okay. from there. Yeah. For, yeah, can I also just touch on Gomez before I give you it? Really? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. What I want to say of Gomez is, I mean, yeah, the last night Gomez wasn't very good. But, you know, he, the thing with Gomez is, we, we, I was saying as well, you know, he needs some matches to get into rhythm. But, you're not going to get those matches to try to get into rhythm if you're going to put performances like that when you get your chance. Um, you know, and if if Matt himself for Leicester as well, Gomez had a very good opportunity last night and for Saturday, obviously if Matt's not good playing, point. to to prove something to Klopp and say, you know what, I, I am still here. You know, when Matt when Gomez got injured and Lovren got injured, Matt came in and straight away right after that we started putting in some great performances. Do you remember when he came in in December and we had um. Burnley away, and you know we we only conceded one that Bournemouth away kept a clean sheet. Napoli at home we kept a clean sheet in such a massive match, and then he obviously got injured. Lovren had a little spell, then he got injured as well. Then Matip came back in for the rest of the season basically and proved himself. And then Gomez again, you have to remember had a little chance at the, at the start of the season against City, against um, uh, Norwich, against Chelsea. Obviously Chelsea are right back and you know played different positions in that one. But he had a couple of chances, you know, he started off the season. Then Matthew came back in and just had a much better I didn't think Gomez did bad against Norwich. I didn't think he did, he did bad against City. But Matip at the minute it's just on another level in terms of his concentration, in terms of his um positioning, everything. So he had the chance, Gomez, to um, you know, show Klopp what he's about. I mean, this, that performance on, on on Wednesday is just gonna make it's gonna prove a point of Klopp to say you know, that's why Matip was starting. I think Matip would be looking at the game last night and thinking, you know, yes, he wants your team to win, obviously, but he'd be looking at the I'm not worried about Gomez taking my position back after that performance. So, you know, you know, Gomez, 
forget about you know forget about the rhythm that's what i mean i was talking about it like myself yesterday forget, forget about the rhythm if you if you're not going to be putting in performances you're not going to be getting those games to get the rhythm um and you're not going to be you're going to be sitting on that bench again uh but yeah i mean my, my 11 for um leicester in goal uh adrian uh probably his last game um yeah i think so Probably his last game. I feel, I feel really sorry for him, but yeah, it's probably his last game. I mean, also I was saying this: if if it wasn't, if this was, if he was playing back up to Minilio Carriers, he'd be keeping that position for the rest of the season. I think so, man. I think so. so. Um, he, it's just that he's such, a, he's so unlucky because he's he's behind the best goalkeeper. Oh, he, but he, but he, but he, but he knew this was going to happen. He, yeah, he's probably, he's, I mean, he probably, he's probably lucky to be even having this experience. But yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's a it's a great little experience for him in, in his career, and he will get more game time. I mean, you probably starting at Arsenal. He was like FA Cup games as well, so he will get games. Um, so yeah, I mean, Adrian for me uh, in goal, uh, right back at Arsenal, Arnold, obviously Matip. If not Gomez, Van Dijk, Robertson, in midfield now for Binho. Um, this is the toss up now. Uh, I mean, I want to see not the not the cut off, but I, I want to see Naby so bad. I just don't. And and at some point, he's got to get a run of games, like you said. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just don't know. Like, is he ready now? I mean, I know. Is, yeah, it's hard to say. It's this is say. this is what I mean. Like, I'll put him in. It's ahead of Oxford Chamberlain. But my, my thing is, is he ready? Like, I'm not too sure if he is. Like, if he's ready, put him in. If he's not, obviously don't. But I don't know if he's got that that sort of match fitness yet. Because I mean, Klopp suggested that after the MK Dons game, he wanted K to um, but what he wanted K was to play more than 60 minutes, and then the um, the physio and forward him, you know, take him off, take him off 60 minutes. That's enough now. And Klopp thought that he could play more than that, but obviously Vizio knows better. Todd took him off and he played a couple of minutes yesterday. So I'm not sure if he's fit. We're now them on the right side this time and Kate on the left side. If he's not, Chamberlain on the right side and we're now them on, on the left side of the midfield. I don't want to see Henderson in the team. He's, had, he's, he's been subbed off after, after an hour against um, Sheffield. He was subbed off after an hour against um, Salzburg. Two poor performances. He doesn't deserve to start, and I put Chamberlain in the team, and obviously the front three. So you know we need we need um, something something to just give us a bit more. I don't, and obviously no Milner, please. I mean I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised to see Milner. I just I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't want to see. I wouldn't be surprised either, man. And that's that's uh, no Lallana. I don't think Lallana's signing, anyway, but no Milner, please. I just actually I, I completely forgot about Milner actually. Um, he could he could start in this game if I want to see. He's very much good. Um, and, if home, he, I don't know. Yeah. and if he does, yeah, and if he does, as I said, I won't complain. Um, I'll look at the team and say, you know, we can we can win this anyway with whoever we have in the field. So, but I would like to see one of Chamber and Kate starting. But uh, Kate for me, I'd, I'd love to see Kate play. Um, but as I said, I don't know if he's up to speed. And the front three is the front three. Um, and it's because we haven't got we haven't got a lot of, a lot of injuries at the minute, uh, which is good. You know, only Shakiri maybe, and that's it. So we're staying quite clear of injuries, which is very good. And we're going into October. Hopefully, we can get past this international break and not have any more um, coming into it because we've got a tough period in October. Uh, very tough with United and all these games coming up. So it's important that we stay injury free. Yeah, I, I usually don't do this, and, I, and I'm only just more so devil's advocate. I'm just curious to your opinion. I love our team, obviously. Everybody that's, that's on our team, uh, there's some people who I don't really look forward to seeing if we have to see him, you know, um, Lalana is one guy who stands out, Lovren. Um, but <clears throat> with Naby's situation and not knowing if this is going to be something that is going to take place throughout his Liverpool career, the injuries, the stop starts, and, and Ox too, let's be real. I mean, that was a serious injury he got. He's still not really fully back, which, okay, that's fair. But is he going to have the issues? After that, Lalana is going to be gone soon. Milner will be gone soon. So we're looking at Genie, Fab, Hendo. Just devil's advocate, just curious. I mean, I, I like who we got. I'm just asking, across Europe, give me a couple names, if anybody, that you think could come into our midfield and give us some more depth and or be a, a, like a consistent start. Um, well, if, anybody you like that you've been paying attention to. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm hearing Milner might get a contract. Um, oh, really? Wow. For, for, for another year. Um, and I, as I said, I wouldn't be too, too, too surprised. Klopp loves Milner. Uh, but touching on answering your question, um, yeah, I mean, you're spot on, mate, because Lalana, obviously, I wanted him gone this summer, but Klopp obviously has said, you know, we're not signing anyone this summer, so I'll, so I'll just keep Lalana, you know, for that, which I'm fine with, if, if you're going to keep him. If we're not going to sign anyone, you want to keep your players. You don't want to, you know, um, 
you know, let them, let them go. Um, and I look at that and I think, you know, six midfielders and obviously maybe a couple of them not up to, up to scratch, a couple of them aging. Um, so midfielders, who would I look at in Europe? I mean, it, it all depends on what sort of player you like, really. I mean, if, if you're into this. Yeah, sport, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, kind of, that, that's, that's kind of what I'm asking. Like, not even thinking necessarily like yeah, fit, I mean, fitting our, our, our so-called system, but just guys that you think, um, you know, you'd maybe like to see in our team and maybe it can work well with Klopp. Even if it's like crazy shots, but whoever comes to your mind. I got a few, but I just want to know who you have. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously a, a bit of um, a question on the spot, so I'm going to you know, give a few names. I mean, if as I said, it depends on what, if it's creativity, like like some loads, loads of fans are still banging up about Coutinho. Um, you, you can say him. I mean, obviously, he would, uh, as much as you could say we don't, I, I, would, I would still like to see Coutinho in the Liverpool shirt. I think he'd give us a lot more uh, in different games, in certain games. Um, like I think in, in the game against Sheffield, the way I really think that even though, um, as I said, you know, the midfield are there to do their job and they're not, their job's not great, but I think that he would be an option, um, a brilliant option. Obviously, he's not going to come, but I'm just saying, or he would come, but I'm, we don't want him anymore. But, um, I thought he he would have been a nice option. What I like, what I've been watching is, you know that in, um, I don't know if you watch Inter Milan a lot this season, but I've I've, t- I've looked at a player. Uh, I, I really like this player, Sensi. I, I don't know you're gonna say Sensi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's good. Uh, he, he he's been top class. I mean, he, yeah, he has good. awesome midfield. His energy is absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, I really like Sensi. I think he's a brilliant player. Um, and looking at another player, I, I'm a big fan of Madison as well. Um, I'm sure. I'm not sure if you if you like oh, Madison. Madison, Madison. Yeah, yeah, Leicester. Okay. Yeah, I really like Madison. Um, oh. I think he's a, I, you know, it's, I, I, I wouldn't want Coutinho back. If you're asking me, if you want Coutinho back or do you want Madison, I'd want a Madison because it's something fresh. It's something not that Madison's a better player, but I'd want something fresh. Um, you know, something someone that's hungry to come back again, not someone that that, that betrayed us a couple of years ago, wants to come back because he flogged Barcelona. You know, I want someone that, that's hungry to come back and uh, prove himself to. to to the, to the world stage, I'd really love Anderson, but the price would be so so much. Um, okay. And because it's Brendan Rodgers, um, and you know he likes these little creative players, you know playing creative players and right. I'd offer him Adam Lallana, maybe Shakiri, or some of these players. Um, and I think that would actually, I mean, Lallana well, also got the eighty for for um, Tankhead. So I mean, they, they if they really wanted to get somebody, I'm sure they can they can get somebody to replace. Oh, well, I say that like that's easy, but. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 exactly. They still got the money from my wife, haven't they? So they didn't spend yeah. it on us. So um, they still got a lot of money. Um, I mean, if, if they didn't want to get, they got money to get a replacement. But I'm saying, you know, I mean, Shakiri, Alana, I don't think they'd be a bad players for this stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I probably, they would probably want the money. Um, as I said again, I used to love um, Anderlecht. I'm not sure. I'm, I think he's a good player now. But Anderlecht, I was a big fan of Tillemans. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Really big fan. I remember City wanted him and he ended up going to Monaco. Um, to try to you know, improve his career. It didn't really happen and went to Leicester. So Tillemans, I thought, would, be, would, would, would have been a good player because I think he's just one of those... He's not a proper um, creative player, but he's, he's sort of a number eight that can... That, that's, that's a much better passer than Jordan Henderson. Uh, he's a much better passer than Wijnaldum. So he's more of a, a number eight uh, in, in between that can do you know, those roles. Um, so I do like a couple of midfielders from Leicester. Um, if you're talking from Europe... As a Sensi, I really like Sensi. Um, you know, and th- that's about it, really. I mean, I'm not, as I said, I- I'm just not too sure right now on midfielders who 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 are pro- available out there that you yeah. can put up. And it, it all depends on what Klopp wants. Do, do you want a creative midfielder in the, um, in the summer, or do you want, again, another, you know, midfielder just to um, sort of give you that? Give you that um, that defensive stability or that that workhorse that Klopp sort of likes with these midfielders. But again, I don't think he's. I don't know. I think you probably maybe sign one midfielder in the summer. Maybe you might. I, I just don't know about Klopp because maybe Grujic could be coming back. Um, yeah. Yeah. From from her, yeah. you know, you, you got Grujic there. Never mind spending all this money on Madison, all these players. You might have a ready-made player there in Grujic that that can that can be really developed there. Um, so you know, right now I'm a bit short on um, midfielders. Um, in terms of in terms of my thought, but as I said, in the Bundesliga, there's a few you can look at um, as well. But I think that we're I think we're we're well set for this season in terms of midfielders, and it's all about Naby Keita as well. Because if he comes back, and you have to remember, we've been playing a lot of last season and this season, we we haven't played Naby Keita at all. Um, and when and you have to imagine when he comes back into full stride and when he's when he's fit for the base the whole for the whole of the year. 
he's going to be so important to us, so, so important, because he's not just going to be, you know, Nabi Kea isn't that sort of, you know, that creativity, you know, breaking, um, you know, shooting from distance, or, you know, he's that player that can link them, with, um, that can take the ball from defence, drive with it, and play that sort of ball. He can do both positions. He's a perfect number eight for us. Um, and, you know, it's why we waited so long. It's why we waited for the whole year to sign him. Because we know that there's a, there's a play in there. And it's all because of these stop-start injuries. Um, because you have to remember, if Nabi Keir was fit, he probably would have started the Champions League final. Yeah. Um, you know, I think he would have started the Champions League. He started the semi-final. He started the, 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 the run-in for the league title. Uh, and he, he probably would have started the Champions League final. So it's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting to see what club does in the summer. But... I think he's. I don't know what he's gonna be looking at in the summer. Um, I really don't. I don't know what. He, I, it's hard to tell, man. It's very hard to tell because normally you would, but because there's not a lot of weaknesses in the team, and yeah. what because we were very surprised that we didn't sign anyone in the summer when we we, we thought we could have done a couple of players. You know, it's surprising. Uh, it would be a surprise to see who we signed. As I said in the field right now, as you can see, I'm stuck on options because I just don't know what um what players we might go for. His creativity, yeah. or, you know what I mean. Yeah. So. There's a lot of players in Europe. You look at Thomas Party, fantastic player. Well, that's, uh, that's one of the ones I was going to bring up, actually. Yeah, I mean, Thomas Party. I'd, lo- I'd love to have that dude, man. I would yeah, love to have that guy. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, imagine having Thomas Party and Fabinho as a... As, as oh, a, my God. A, so, like a, two, uh, a pivot? Whew. Yeah, exactly. In the 4 3 3 one. I mean, you, you, could go, you could go all guns blazing. You don't... You can that would put be nasty, man. That would be a nasty team right there. Yeah, so... Uh, but I just think that with, with Klopp, you just know again for Wijnaldum's going to be in that uh, in the in the eleven again next year. Yeah, but, and that's fine. That's fine. You know. Yeah, and it's completely fine. Uh, but you know, you know, Klopp has a lot of trust in these players. Um, and I don't think he's going to sign. I don't know if he's going to sign him before again this summer. I think he probably might sign one. Um, but because well, I think, yeah, but 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 I see. I think I think this season will really give us the answer for that because as much as he loves uh, Naby and and Ox, my worry with Ox is that. Um, and I don't want to, people to take this necessarily literally because I'm making a point, is I think we saw how Sturge started to get injuries and we saw how he didn't really plant feed and, and do move the way that we were used to him moving because it almost felt like he was worried about getting injured again. I'm slightly worried about Ox with that. Ox is younger. He's probably, that's probably not going to happen, but I'm wondering if he's holding back a bit. Still got faith in Ox and I, I know he'll come good. As much as I love Nabby, I don't know if this stop start stuff is going to end. I hope it does. I don't want to think negatively, but it's like every time we turn around, they have a good run of games, and it gets a knock. Whether it be in training, warm ups, yeah. uh, you know, going to going to get something to eat. I don't know. He's always getting hurt. So I'm, I'm hoping that those guys can come true because I think this season will really tell us. And I don't think I, I didn't bring this up to say like who should we go for January. I'm just thinking in, in the future. But yeah. for me, I think Thomas Partey was, was the top of my list. Yeah. Also, like Alan at uh, Napoli. Oh yeah, yeah. When I watched him quickly before I say when I when I watched him, um, I thought he was like in his thirties, and I check him. He's I did too. Is he not? Is he not in his thirties? No, he's twenty years old. Oh Jesus Christ! I thought he when was I definitely thirty. Him, oh, 32, 30, 33. When I checked him, yeah. I said, "Oh yeah, he's 32, 33. But when I checked, I, I go on um, Wikipedia. I check him. He's, he's uh, twenty years old. I'm thinking. I thought wow. he was. I thought how? he was. At least, I thought he was at least Fernandino's age. Yeah, and I was thinking, how are people not snapped up? Um, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, man. This dude he, can do it all. He can do. I mean, I got the biggest goal scorer, but other than that, he's a really scrappy, physical, can be yeah. a boxer, box or a DM. And then the last shot is more of a probably won't happen, but I'd love to have him at a Liverpool, um, in a Liverpool uniform, and that's Verratti. Probably won't happen, but obviously mm. I love Verratti. Yeah, I mean Bruno it. Fernandez. Saw people be calling for Bruno Fernandez uh, over the summer. This sort of goal scoring midfielder that that people want. I mean, obviously, my United were linked with him. You know, a lot of people wanted him. Uh, again, the jury's still out on him. Um, I'm not too sure about him, but he, he's got a shot on. You know, he's got a shot on, and I do like my midfielders that can take a shot from out, outside the box. That do like to take the goalkeeper. Um, so there, there are a few. Obviously, Mavrai, all these midfielders are fantastic, all world class, and they would improve our midfield. But at the minute, I'm just not. It all depends on someone how. Also, how Gruwich is uh, how Gruwich progress uh, forward. I think Lallana will leave. It all depends on. I think if Gruwich does really, really well and he comes into the season, Liverpool, and he gets you know minutes, and he start, he becomes a not. This is not say regular, but he he becomes a rotational player in our team, and he's putting in good performances. I don't think Klopp will, will sign a, a midfielder. It all depends on how he's done at the Berlin. Um, even though I think we do need a midfielder, uh, I do think we need sort of this. 
again, I'm not saying that you know creativity is a, a real issue in the team, but I think it does help you when you have someone like a like a, a James Madison in the team or oh, someone yeah. just a goal scoring midfielder on the left side. Um, because you know, I, I, I really like James Madison, really, really like him. He likes to test his test keepers from outside the box. And I think Chamberlain was sort of becoming that sort of player that could drive and take a shot. You know, oh, he's yeah. so confident he was becoming that. But again, with Chamberlain, some confidence back. That's all. Yeah, he just, he, he just doesn't look at it yet. Um, and it's so still wherever we get, wherever we get, they, they got to be able to get around the pitch, right? Defensively. Yeah. So that that's another thing that these oh, guys were mentioning. They all could work, but they've got to be people who work really hard. And if not, then well, they won't be well, playing. Otherwise, Klopp won't sign them. Yeah, yeah. So, but um, yeah. Just rounding off, I think um, so you. But you're going front three, the usual, right? Salah, Mane, yeah, Firmino. Front three, usual, and uh, you know, as I said, let's just get a couple goals from. Let's get a couple goals early. Um, and, and I'd really like to get just just a couple goals early, and then we can breathe. I mean, I, th- I hope we can breathe because I was breathing at three 0 yesterday. So I was just relaxing, um, feet up, thinking, you know, it's going to be a nice little win. And then I, it goes to 3-1, I'm still kind of relaxing. And 3-2, you know, I'm, I'm proper, you know, into the game now. It was it was a huge shot. But we got the win in the end. Um, and as I said, it's good when you get the win and you learn lessons instead of dropping points and learning the lessons. So, you know, it's good. As I said, this Liverpool team always finds a way to win, even if they're down. Um, so I'm very, very happy in the end with it. All right, score prediction? Um... I'm I'm switching between two here, two nil and three one. Um, mm, so no, I think Leicester are going to get a consolation or or, or goal where we're two nil up and to get back in that game, you know. So I think maybe three one Liverpool, three one Liverpool. Yeah, I'm thinking three two. I hate to say it, but I, I just I have a feeling that um you know Leicester look good this year. I don't want to necessarily go full into the believing the quote unquote hype. They do yeah. have a good team, and if Madison is there. It gives me even more of a reason why they could be a bit more lethal. Um, mm. They just they just look good. I like Tillman's in there. Is that his name? Tillman's? Tillman's, yeah. I mean, yeah, they got I like, Chow- I like him. And Chow- Didi, of course. Didi. Yeah, they got a, got a nice little team, man. And, of course, Vardy usually does pretty well again. I'm pretty sure most games we've played him, he gets a yeah. goal, I think. Yeah. Um, but he hasn't scored in the last three, is it? I don't know. Well, no, last two games, something. So he hasn't Against scored- us? Yeah, he hasn't scored oh, in the last... Really? He, okay. he didn't score last season because he, got, well, yeah, he was actually suspended in the... In the Game at the King Power. He didn't score in the one at Anfield. It was, was Slabed that scored. Um, it was uh, who? It was Slabed, Maguire. That's what they call him. Oh, fuck. That was him. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Him. Right. So, yeah, I, I think we'll get the win. I think we'll get the win. I mean, 3 2, yeah, it, you know what? The way the way we were defending, um, and I think with Livardi, they're killing quite well. The thing with Leicester is, but before we obviously round up, I think with Leicester, they don't have a lot of um, uh, attacking threat down the flanks. Um, I think it's more more of their fullbacks instead of the wingers. I'm not really too. I, I don't think Damari Gray is, is necessarily a great player. I don't think Harvey Barnes is a great player. Al oh, Brighton's more of a you know you know digging in game. Their time he doesn't like, play much lately. Al Brighton. No, he doesn't. He's just more of that. Uh, when I look at Brighton, he's just more of that jo- sort of James Milner than the team. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Stuck in there. No, you know, you know what though? I'm going to change my score prediction, and the reason why is because even if we do concede a goal at, at um. In the Premier League in general, but at home, it's not more than one. So yeah. I'm actually going to go with because of the result against Salzburg and how frustrated Van Van Dijk will look at that tape and he'll be disappointed himself. Mm. Um, I think we'll bounce. But you know, I'm gonna go two nil. I'm gonna go two nil because I think um, again in, in the Premier League, Champions League is always a different thing. You never know what's going to happen. But Champions right. League at home. We're pretty damn good. I don't really. I I think this whole undefeated thing at Anfield is going to go on for quite a long time, to be honest. And I hate. I don't hope I don't jinx that. But we're really good. And even if Gomez is in the game, so yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go two 0 actually. Two 0 Yeah, I, I mean, as I said, two 0 as well. Yeah, even Gomez in the game. I just want to see a more mature performance in Liverpool again. You know, yeah. getting back to what we know. You know, let's get the. Um, and and obviously, I, I think. Quickly, I mean, the crowd was very poor last night. I mean, obviously, we're watching from the TV, but I'm not deaf, right? You know, I, I can hear. I, I don't think the crowd was great last night. I think even some people um, I was talking to that went to the game, they said the crowd were poor. And we were three new up, and we were just kind of like, you know, you know, a bit, bit shell-shocked. Then we, when they scored, we had a little few Liverpool, 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 and then we went back to our seats again. You know, so we need to be a bit, we need to be a bit more um, supportive behind the boys. Um, you know, I think we need to, we need to see something that. From the performance from the crowd as well on Saturday because yeah, Leicester their, City, fans, their, their fans were definitely routed. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean they, they were brilliant, weren't they? So Leicester City, um, it's sort of a game that 
it's like it's like a top six game, isn't it? You know, they're probably better than top, better most. They're better than most top six teams at the minute. Um, you know, like you look at United, they're better than them. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough challenge. But I don't know why the game's on a three three o'clock kickoff in the UK. <laughs> Just it's unbelievable. I mean, you got West Ham and Palace on TV um, at five half five, but you got Liverpool and Palace on a three o'clock. A Liverpool less than three o'clock when it, it, this game just it's a brilliant game. So I'm gonna have to stream that on my laptop. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that in the UK. That I sucks. Mean, you, get, you get that? You get on the TV? Yeah, don't we have, we have no problem with that. I forget about that. That every, sucks. Yeah, do you get every game like every single match on the TV? Oh, every well, and and and, and especially because which is probably a good thing for me as a, as an American supporter. You know the Boston connection. So oh yeah, 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 yeah. They show every game. I mean, it's very rare over the last few seasons. It's very rare that I can't get a Liverpool, especially a Premier League game. Oh, please. I can always get them. Always. Wow. Yeah, Champions League game sometimes. Like, yesterday, I had to go to three different pubs just to find a fucking game. And even when I went there, it was streams. You, you, don't get the Champions, you can't watch it at home on the Champions League. Well, I'm, I'm usually at work anyway because it starts at three afternoon here. So oh, I'm usually okay. still okay. at work. So I have to, like, finish work quickly and then find a bar, which yeah. usually isn't, isn't, yeah. isn't a problem. But like, yesterday, I had to go to three different bars until I found one and had it. So... Mm. Well, they, um, well, they were probably showing the Boston and Inter games, weren't they? You know it. You know it. Yeah. You know it. I was well, so pissed. I was like, well, it wasn't a surprise because there's some Barcelona fans are everywhere. So it wasn't a surprise, but. And it was, was, it was like, sort of the main, the main selection of the match anyway, even though even though it wasn't an entertaining match. It was basically Inter get an early goal and just parking the whole Barcelona right. on Sunday. So, yeah. uh, so I, 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 missed like, I missed like the first 20 minutes. I saw the. The second and third goals. Um, oh, you, you missed you missed the you missed the good part, then. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. I was so pissed off. Yeah, but, but um, also, yeah, with, with the UK also as well. Um, what happens is um, there's this law where they can't you can't watch three o'clock games unless you stream them. They don't put them on TV because um, it it's something it's a law something to do with kids um going out instead of just football. It's ridiculous, man. So it's just ridiculous. So I have to watch the after stream the game. So I'm maybe a minute or two behind. Of actual time, so I, sleep, I turn off my phone um, when I'm watching three o'clock. I turn off my my my, my TV. Uh, I turn off everything. You know, I close. I just watch the game because I don't want spoilers. Well, I yeah. hate that. I hate the alerts, man. Just, like, no, stop. It just ruins the goal celebrate. I want to be. I want to watch it like it's a live match. So, right, uh, right, right. I mean, you, you get lucky. You get the three o'clock kickoffs. We don't, but it's not a big problem because Liverpool are mostly on TV uh, all the time. So I, I get to watch them. Well, make sure you turn off your. Um, well, I guess. I don't know. I forget what time Mane is on or Mame is on, but I guess you, Jason, and 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 Jams are on the same time. So oh, no. I yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. I will have be. That issue. I always turn my alert off. So. I won't be on that until we got half time in the group chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I hope we can catch up on for the review after on Saturday or something like that. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's uh, the same feeling I have after, even though we lost in Napoli, that the next game was Chelsea. I'm so excited about this Leicester team. Yeah. I really want to see um, what Leicester are about. I think that'll be a big test for them and and somewhat of a test for us, but. I just think again. I just think we're on a different level, and we'll see when Saturday when Saturday yeah. comes. But I'm, I'm sure we will get the win. Exactly, and and the thing what I love is I mean, I'm, I'm, maybe managers don't like. I mean, Klopp, we've got a big squad, so but maybe managers don't like it when we've got all these games and all these packs. But I love it. I mean, look, we just played last night, and we're and and and, and we're playing again in a couple of days. Um, and I just love watching Liverpool play. Don't you? I just love watching football. So it's just great to you know play last night. Couple of days later, we've got Liverpool again, so we've got we get to watch Liverpool again. So it's just it's just brilliant. I love it when these games just come thick and fast, you know. So um, again, let's just get this win and wait through that boring national break. When we come back, we've got a big test against United. So, but as a one game at a time, and let's just get this three points. Go seventeen in a row. Yeah, this, these next fixtures are mad, man. But I, if any team can get through it, it's Liverpool. I think mm -hmm. this uh, international break, although we all hate him, I think might come at a pretty good time for us, to be honest. Yeah. So um, let's look forward to the game, Lester. Uh, Gary, thanks for your time as always, man. We'll talk soon. No all right, bro.